Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a REST service using MVC.NET Framework and C Sharp. So I'm going to give you a preview of what the application is going to look like. So I have a service installed on my computer and you can see that it's running right now. If I type in the word say hello for my service, I'm going to get a result. I'm going to get a string. I'm also going to change this to my second service that I'm configuring called get object model. And you can see that it's going to return to me some JSON service. So I'm going to put in a number here. It looks like no matter what number I put in, I get the same results. However, if I change my number to a negative five or something, then I get a different string result. And so that's what we're going to create right ahead. So if you haven't seen the preview of how this REST service stuff works, look at the previous video in the playlist and then continue. Now before we can make this work, I'm going to make sure that I have something installed that's going to be a requirement. So I'm going to run and choose Visual Studio Installer. And let's check to see what kind of components we've got installed for our applications. So as you can see, the first thing it asks me to do is to update my installer before I can proceed. Okay, so install one thing to install another. Okay, so finally I got all the updates gone for the Visual Studio installer. Let's see if we can modify our Visual Studio Community 2019. What I want to check for is to see what features are installed. And so what I'm looking for is something called WCF. So there it is at the bottom. It says Windows Communication Foundation. So that needs to be checked. If it's not installed, I'm going to Individual and Components, and I'm going to search for it. So I'm going to type in WCF and make sure that it's checked here. And then I can choose Install while downloading, and then I'll be ready to go for my next uh, part of the project. So when I'm all finished here, I can close the installer, and I can go back into Visual Studio. And let's get this thing rolling. Okay, so I'm going to open up the Activity 3 that I had earlier. So I believe you could also just run a, a fresh project from scratch and you'll get the same results here because we're going to create a new project inside of this uh, project here. So I'm going to get started here with my Solution Explorer. I'm going to right click on the solution and I am going to choose Add a New Project. So I am looking for WCF as my solutions. So the solution that I'm looking for is called a WCF service application. And let's see, I don't want this one. This one says it runs in uh, Visual Basic. Let's try the next one up here. This one says C Sharp. So let's go ahead and choose Next. So this is going to be a very simple project. I'm going to be basically making Hello World. So let's call it Hello World Service. All right, so let's go in to look at the files here. We're in the Hello World Service project now. And I'm going to look at this one here called iService1, and that's an interface that we're going to create for uh, this other one called Service1. So let's, let's make sure that we get all this done by ourselves. So I'm going to delete the contents of each of these guys here. So let's just retype those and create them from scratch and explain as we go. So the first guy here is called iService1. So let's uh, set up a game plan of what we're going to do. So this file is going to define the URLs that this service will accept. And so the first one will simply return a string response. The second URL that we're going to set up is going to define a parameter. And the third one is going to return an entire object. And so through one of each of these three cases is what we're going to design right now. So the first thing I need is a operation contract uh, format here. So I put in square brackets to tell me what I'm creating. The second line here, I'm going to define the uh, actual parameters here. So web get is the keyword I'm looking for. And then we're going to tell it the response format. So let's put in the keyword web message format and then put a dot and you can see that we can choose between XML and JSON. Then a comma. Then the URI template is going to be say hello. So that's the string that we're trying to return. And so then finally, we're going to return the string for the method hello or say hello. So this will be the simplest of the three examples. Now, where does this method occur? So this is going to actually be implemented in the other class here called service1. 
So just like I did before, I am going to delete all of this stuff that's here, and we're going to type it ourselves. So the first item up on the top, it says, hey, service one is supposed to be implementing the uh, interface that you just created. And I suspect that you want to use this method called say hello. So let's go ahead and see if I can get this. Let's try show potential fixes, and we're going to implement the interface. And there it is, say hello. Now this is going to return a string, so let's do a return. And in here you can put in any kind of a message that you like. So you can put in gibberish or you can put in something more sensible. So I'm going to change my string to a Bible verse here from the book of 3 John that says, Dear friend, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. So right now we're in the middle of a crisis uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, hopefully in a year or two, this sounds like old news, but right now everyone's concerned about their health. So there is your message that says, say hello. Let's test this out. All right, so you think this would be easy, right? Let's see if this works. It won't work, but then we'll fix it. So I'm going to right click on my uh, service here and choose view in the browser with Chrome. Let's see what happens. It should show up as a service, but then I think there's an error. So here we go. I've got my service running. So I'm expecting that say hello is an endpoint. And so I have a 400 error. Page isn't working. Not very helpful. But I can tell you that I forgot to do some configuration, so I'm pretty sure I know where the problem lies. Let's go and back into the code here. So the problem is that we have this thing called web config that needs some settings. So it's an XML file, as you can see, and somewhat confusing, you might call it. So let's go in and add a few things that will make sense after you see them. Of course, that's the way it goes, right? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a section called services. So you can see I'm going to have a beginning and an endpoint in the XML file. Inside of there, I'm going to add a new service. So let's put in bracket service. So the category I'm looking for is behavior configuration. And then I have to give it a name. So this is a name you can invent. I'm going to call mine my rest service type behaviors. And then I'm going to supply it as a name. So this is going to be associated with the service, of course, service one. Now, inside of here, we've got one more item to put. Okay, so the next line down is configuring our endpoint. So the behavior configuration, we're going to give it a label called web. Now we're going to have to define web further down in the page. And then the binding. So the binding is what kind of protocol are you going to be using? So we're going to be using web HTTP. And then the contract is going to refer to the interface that we have just defined uh, in the previous steps. So hello world service and dot i service one is what we're looking for. Okay, so that's part of what we need. Now we need to go and add some more things to clarify these two items that are on or that are not finished yet. They're unresolved. So we got underlined green text. So let's go down to the uh, section called behavior and let's add a name. So the name that I'm going to put in is the name that I referred to higher up. So this is going to say we are going to allow get and um, HTTPS get. So both of these uh, encrypted and unencrypted results will be allowed to be used. Down here in this section just before behaviors closes, I'm going to add another one. So I need to put in something called endpoint behaviors. And inside of here, we're going to put in a new behavior. So the behavior on this guy, the name is going to be called web. And so that's going to define this parameter that's listed up here on line 15. So what is an endpoint behavior for the web? So I'm looking for something called web HTTP. There it is. And the autocomplete gives it me as a capital H. Okay, so we have some configuration that we have to take care of here. So Let's see, I'm going to highlight what's new. So that was new. This was new. And we added this whole thing up here called services being new. Okay, so I want to run this. So I could either go and right click on this guy here where it says service one, or I think there's another option. I can do a right click on this project and choose uh, set startup, set as startup project. So I'm just going to right click on the service one and choose view in the browser. And let's see what happens now. Maybe I'll get better results. So service one is running. And let's try say hello. And this time I get my string. So there is the first uh, rest service that's successful. 
congratulations. All right, so let's go return to the iService interface and let's try to add another buddy. So we're going to go and maybe copy and paste this and let's make something similar. Now that's a pretty generic term. You could have said get user, get anything you want, but I'm gonna choose get data. So what kind of data are we gonna get? Well, we'll find out here, we'll just code it. So let's go into our service one and we should see an error message pop up at the top of the screen. Sure enough, there it is. It says your interface doesn't include the get data method. Well, let's go ahead and implement that. And here is get data. All right, so the goal here of get data is to create some kind of a, a response to the page that incorporates this value as if its answer. So the answer that I'm going to provide is the area of a circle. So my formula is this. If your voice travels, value, value feet, that's the linear distance, then the influence of your voice will cover, and now I need the formula for a circle. So do you remember from your math class that pi r squared is the formula? So r is the radius, so let's do r squared, which is r times r. And then pi I'm going to estimate as 3.14. So that should give us an answer. Let's try it out. I'm going to right click and choose run this program again. Okay, so here we go. The uh, thing that we're looking for now is get data. If I press enter, it says endpoints not found. Okay, let's put in a number. Let's put in a slash one. There, now we've got an answer. It says, if your voice travels one feet, then the influence of your, uh, your voice is 3.14 feet. Let's see what happens if I change that to a two. So there it is. We are now up to 12 square feet. So if you can shout, let's say up to 100 feet away, then you will cover 31,400 square feet of an influence. So you can annoy all the people within 100 feet of you. So it looks like we've got uh, Say Hello working, and now we've got this thing called Get Data, which is able to demonstrate a parameter as well as just a endpoint. Hey, now we're ready to go on to the third item in the list, and so I wanted to show you what it's like to serialize a full object. So let's go and add another endpoint down here in the last item. So let's copy and paste what we created before. So I'm going to change this from get data to get model object. And I'm going to pretend that I'm asking for an ID number. So get data down here is not going to return a string. It's going to return an object. And so I'm going to invent an ob object in a minute. So let's call this thing a hello object. And it's going to complain. It says, I have no idea what a hello object is, but we'll make one. And then get data has to be changed to uh, get model object. There we go. And this thing has to be changed to ID. Okay, now we have to make this hello object. So it says we don't have one, so let's go and see if there's some suggestions. So we can generate the hello object in a new file. Let's try that one. And where did it show up? Here's hello object over here. So hello object is got to have some properties. Let's come up with a couple. So let's go to prop press tab tab and I'm gonna make it a boolean and let's call this thing uh, happy hello happy hello is a true false and I'm going to say by default it is a false proposition so it's usually not happy then the second property that I'm going to create is called hello message and you notice on both of these that we have getters and setters they're public and they have a default value. So something along those lines. You need an object. You can put in more properties if you want with integers and everything else, but for now, that'll do. So let's return over to iService again, and let's check this out. It says here, we understand what this object is. It's been defined, that's good. Okay, back to service one, and we are going to see that it says you've added a new method again, and you have not implemented it. So let's go ahead and show potential fixes and we are going to implement the interface. So where did it go? Here it is. We are going to change the code on this section here. So since it is the third example, I'm going to just keep the consistent uh, ordering here. Now down here, let's create some kind of a object to return. So we're going to create a hello object and then by the time we're done here, we're gonna return it. So I'm just going to make sure I have the beginning and the end. Now in the center here, let's Let's make some rules up. So if there's an ID given to us that is positive, let's give it a happy hello. And if it's a negative, let's give it a negative hello. 
So let's check to see if the ID number that they sent to us is positive. So we're going to parse it and then check to see if it's greater than zero. If it is, then let's set the uh, Boolean value to true, which is called happy hello. And then let's create a positive message that we can send back called, hey, great day, couldn't be better, eh? So then the alternate is the uh, negative numbers. So we'll do an else statement. And then we'll copy and paste the code that we did up, up above and we will give the opposite kind of results. So happy hello is now set to a Boolean false and we'll give it a negative message. So I'll say, I'm feeling very glum. I hope the sun comes out tomorrow and then I'll put a sad face. Then finally, we're going to return this hello object. Don't promise anything here, but let's go ahead and run it in the browser. Okay, so it's up and running. Let's move it to the side here to make sure I get this right. So the item that I'm looking for is called get model object. So let's go get model object. And let's put in a slash two. And look at there. Actually, it worked. I'm surprised. I thought I was missing something, but uh, maybe I didn't. So I was pretty skeptical that this was actually going to work, and here's why I thought so. Let's go into hello object. I thought I had to do serialization, which is usually done this way, where you put in a bracket and then you put in the word data member in just before a property. And you can see data member is unrecognized, so I need to go and say, I'm using serialization here. So let's put in data member in front of each of these properties. I'll probably get the same results, but um, I don't know why it actually worked before. Uh, it was automatically serializing my object. Okay, so we're here at the service. Let's see if we can get there. Let's go to get model object and let's put in the same thing. And sure enough, there it is. So we've got uh, the property called happy hello. We've got the message and a bunch of strings that are going on. So you can probably create an object of any kind with all kinds of properties and it will serialize it correctly for you. So there is an example of three different endpoints that you can create for a service. So we did uh, say hello as our first guy, and then we had another one which was get values. What was that called? That was called get, uh, get data. And then it would tell me a little problem with a math formula. And then finally was get uh, model object, and I can serialize an entire object. So. That is your model. That's your example to start with. So if you were to use this for a real REST service, you can think that you would go to a database, you would uh, try to serialize that data, and then put it out to the screen as a list. So JSON data is nice to look at, and it's easy to consume from your other objects. So we'll do another example here, maybe with a little more complex thing, including the database. But for now, that's your start to get you going on um, services using WCF.